In this episode of Moi TV, I'm looking at more common branding mistakes you should avoid. This time, getting far too distracted with what is trendy in design, chasing brand trends and getting completely lost in inspiration procrastination. So unless you've been living under a rock and maybe this is your very first time on YouTube, welcome by the way, I'm, I'm pleased that I'm the channel that's welcoming you here, you're probably already familiar with trend prediction episodes and trend watching episodes from lots of different channels all over the YouTube. They're pretty hot here. And on face value, this can seem like a really cool way to invigorate your inspiration, get some fresh creative ideas that you're going to implement in the way that you're running your brand and business. This show is airing for the first time at New Year, and this is absolutely a time when we all want to turn over for a fresh leaf, start a new resolution, and take a more reinvigorated approach to the way that we're trying to grow our brands and build our businesses. Today I'm explaining exactly what inspiration procrastination is. We'll be looking at how common this trap is as well. And then I want to help you with just a little bit of loving real talk to figure out if actually watching trends and following trends is a good idea for you with where you're at with your wider brand development. There's a very strong chance that this is just a huge waste of time distraction. When chasing trends becomes a problem. A lot of content creators, myself included, like to bone up on what is currently trendy out there when it comes to brand design, brand development. I have obviously have the photography background. I want to know what's trendy in photography so that I can provide a really good up to date service for my clients. Trends within every industry give an insight into how that particular industry is evolving and adapting to all of the changes that are constantly happening in the wider world. So when you're a content creator, curating about those developments is usually a smart idea. You're talking about what has just happened and why you think that might be. And then you're able to position yourself as an authority figure by making a solid prediction about what's about to happen in your world. This can become quite a significant problem for anyone when curation turns into obsession. You get into that awful sick pattern of just endless mimicking and being informed and not using your own independent thought noggin on the situation. I'm talking, for example, about the fashionista who throws out the entire wardrobe every single season. Or that homeowner who is decorating the house on a continuous loop. It never stops developing. Or more specifically, the business owner that goes back and fusses around with their creative fundamentals every time they see a new evolution and trend happening in their world here on YouTube. This reactionary style of behaviour goes completely against the philosophy of what I think it means to be an authentic brand owner of our time. A brand is supposed to speed things up, it's supposed to grease the wheels, but at the same time keep you laser focused on what you're all about as a business. And when you constantly go back and repeat work that you've done, returning to tweak around with your fundamentals, you're actually slowing your own pace down. That's gonna stop you from making any major real progress. And worse still, all of the people that you're trying to appeal to with this amazing trendy brand are going to start getting the impression over time that actually you're a little bit of a flaky brand in their buying decision. You're, why are you constantly flip-flopping and changing, they might think to themselves. Or worse still, it might be a subliminal reaction and for some reason they have a hunch that you're just not the most trustworthy supplier that they want to use in the market that you operate in. Tell me, have you ever fallen head over heels for a trend and then realised later on that it was just a terrible gimmick that you should never have got involved in? In my business, I feel this way about Snapchat. I remember when it first came out, I put a lot of time and effort into trying to make my Snapchat appealing without making the connection in my mind that actually my target customer was not on Snapchat. They're still not on Snapchat since it came out. So investing all that time and effort to look like a really appealing brand on Snapchat was just a massive waste of time for me. 
in my personal life I've done this as well I can remember going into the Gap store one new year in the January sales this is like over 20 years ago <laughs> And they had these extra, extra fluorescent fleece tops that were just slashed down. It was such a bargain that I bought this orange fluorescent fleece top, wore it out to play around in the snow with my family at Christmas, saw the photos and thought, Laura, what the hell were you thinking? Fluorescent orange was never and will never be your colour. <laughs> Complete false economy. When is a good time to go with a trend? Thinking seriously about adopting or evolving your brand in line with a certain trend is a really good idea, but only if your brand fundamentals are genuinely unshakable, you have a proven concept. And by that, I mean that you know that minor adaptations like this in how you show up will continue to win you more business from your solid and loyal base of customers or clients. You have a robust filter and you know exactly what trends you're going to dismiss and what trends are worth considering adopting. That filter, by the way, is made up of your considered core values that underpin your entire business plan for the next year ahead. You have the time and money to invest in doing a trend really well. You're prepared to invest in a little bit more research and skills to help you finesse any trend that you decide to adopt in a high quality way. I've got three great online brand examples for you here and all three of these brands are really clever in the way that they adopt their brand to a certain trend. In fact, I go as far to say every time I notice a subtle adaptation in the brand fundamentals, it makes me love these brands even more. Adobe is a brand that is all about the constant evolution and the cutting edge of what it means to be a creative of our time. So it makes sense that this is a trend aware and a trend adopting brand in the space. Whenever I open any of my Adobe applications, which is pretty much on a daily basis, I will notice if the ident, the loading ident that comes up is different. As soon as that happens, I want to know more. I want to know who created that, why did Adobe select it, and it makes me feel like they have my back as a creative entrepreneur. And it makes sense that they are incredibly generous about the way that they create content with the behind the scenes because they know I'm like every other creative entrepreneur that subscribes to their software. They, as well as me, want to know what's the story behind that Adobe? Why did you pick that particular artist? And what does that artist's work say about what's going on in the rest of our world of creative industries? I spend a fair amount of my time waiting for documents to upload and download from WeTransfer. And I use this software to make sure that my clients have files that are often way too big to email. Now, while I'm sitting there waiting for files to upload or download, I love the entertainment that they give me. They do a great job of showcasing lots of different types of creatives. So I'm basically at a gallery whilst I'm waiting for my files to be taken care of. And they base that all around the time of year. So sometimes it's seasonal. Sometimes it has something to do with a current awareness day. And sometimes it's all about a current festival that's happening somewhere else in the world. And this makes my time waiting for files to be sorted out inspiring and actually enjoyable. It's a nice little way to just take a breath in a workflow while you're waiting for this little step of the workflow to be completed. And that makes me feel like WeTransfer understands me in a deep way as a creative entrepreneur. I never stop being hungry for inspiration. So it bears significance that when I'm waiting around for a menial task like file upload or download to happen, why not inspire me? They get how my brain works. Finally, my last example of an online brand is the work that Google does. And I'm talking about a Google search. We all do 17 million Google searches a day. You know what's going on in the world when you go to Google and you see how they have redesigned their logo on the Google landing page. It's to do with an awareness day. It's to do with news. It's to do with history. It's always so interesting to me how they are able to use their brand fundamentals to show the Google logo in a completely different reimagined way. It reinforces their core value that they are the go-to source with the 
proverbial finger on the pulse of everything that is happening in the world in every single split second. Links to all of these brands that I've just mentioned are below in the show notes. If you haven't used any of them recently, I would love you to take a beat and just go and check them out and see if you feel as inspired as I do by the way that they twist and adapt themselves to trends to reinforce their core brand values. Did you notice how every single one of those brands has core, fundamental, unshakable design principles at play? Even the fact that the Google logo changes, that has become synonymous in my mind with what Google is all about as a brand. In a lot of them, not in all of them, in a lot of them you'll see the same primary colors used so they stay true to the brand color fundamentals but the design will change and adapt and that helps me make that um, synapse connection with the fact that that is Google. But I would say that they've pushed that adaptation even further. Sometimes when you land on google.com, the design is completely bespoke and different. Sometimes they get really cool illustrators in and they'll pick totally different colors and totally different typography. But I know that's Google because I expect it to be different every time I log onto that website. I suppose you might say the fundamental that never changes is the size, the ratio is usually similar and the placement is always bang on the same. It's in the center of my screen when I go to that website. There's an unshakable brand fundamental at play for you. If you know you're guilty of inspiration, procrastination, and actually you spent the last hour watching other trend videos here on YouTube, I want to invite you right now to come and subscribe. I'm all about the real talk. I want to give you inspiration that you can use to get out of your procrastination and take inspired creative action on growing your brand. You can just hit the subscribe button and when you do that, you can also opt to hit the bell. You'll get notified every time a new episode comes out. When is it a bad time to go with a trend? So if you are lacking in your brand fundamentals or you've got a pretty good hunch that you've got a few bits and pieces missing when it comes to your branding, I'd say don't do the trend. If you know that your concept is still at the MVP level, MVP means minimum viable product. So if you're still struggling to get this business off the ground, I'd say avoid any trends. If you're thinking about a more profitable and solid pivot into a slightly different market or you want to bring out a slightly different offering, avoid the trend. If you know that you're going to struggle to be able to filter out what trends to dismiss or adopt, avoid the trend. If you're not decided yet about your real core values, avoid the trends. Or if you haven't got a documented clear business plan for the next year or at a very minimum the next quarter ahead, you know what I'm going to say here, avoid the trends. If you really don't have the time right now or the money to invest in adopting a trend in a really cool high quality way, I want you to avoid that trend. You heard me. Avoid the trends. If any of those points apply to you, even in just an itty bitty way, step away from the trends and crack on with what you need to in your business. Maybe that's helped you come up with a little bit more clarity on where to focus next. Or if you feel like I've just rained on your parade or chopped the legs off your mojo, I'm really sorry, but I want you to focus more. <laughs> I say this with love. I chop those legs off with love. <laughs> if you're new to my TV, you need to know that I'm all about helping you take inspired action. But most importantly, it needs to be prioritized inspired action. So if you're looking for a little bit more help with getting the right focus on how you're doing your branding this year, why not book in for a free cyber cocktail with me? You just need to go onto my website, which is laurapairman.com forward slash cyber dash cocktail go through the online booking system, book in for a free half hour, BYO your own cocktail, and we'll have a little bit of a chat about what's right for you next. What are the benefits for knowing what is trendy in design for your business? Now, there are some pretty cool benefits involved when it comes to getting smart about knowing what is trendy in design and brand development in your world. But remember, we have those all important fundamental principles that are never ever gonna change. This is all about adding a trendy flourish on top. 
So when you're in a position to do that, you can expect to start feeling really confident that you have a timeless brand. And a timeless brand is able to flex and bend in accordance with what is trendy and that bears reference to what is going on in the wider world. I'm talking about brands that have been around for a really long time. They are usually really good at trend adaptation or sometimes trend dismissal. Three great brands that come to mind when I think about this are Coca-Cola, Twinings Tea and Burberry. All of these brands have that baked in confidence of resilience about their marketplace. They know they are good, they are solid before a crazy thing has even happened because they've been around for so long and they adapt to the right trends and probably ignore the trends that don't work for them. The most important and actually my favorite benefit about this is affirming your defined boundaries as a brand. If you've ever watched more TV before, you might have already heard me say that I am really passionate about creating defined boundaries in order to make really excellent creative happen. So the basis around that argument is that the best creatives in the world are naturally rebellious and you can only be really rebellious when you know where the line is on when something becomes inappropriate. If you don't give a creative boundaries, their rebelliousness is untamed, it's uncharted and sometimes that means that the good creative doesn't happen. So you need those defined boundaries, in my opinion, tell me if you disagree in the comments, to make good creative happen. When you have these fundamentals, like the three brands we just mentioned, you know that they're gonna play on the lines, play around the edges. And when they do that, their brilliance and creativity shines. If you've enjoyed learning about what is trendy in design with me today, then I'm willing to bet you're gonna enjoy these episodes up next. I'll see you next time. Mwah. Now, before you go anywhere, don't forget to subscribe. Mwah.